Greetings, greetings, greetings. Let me change that as well. Uh, welcome to Wataguan. Uh, my name is Donovan Simon. I'm the president for the Jamaican Canadian Association, Alberta, based in Calgary. And Wataguan is our way of connecting to the community, talking about things that are happening in our association, happening in our city, happening in our country, happening in Jamaica, happening in the world. And uh, today is going to be a little different because today's questions, you know, I have a few questions uh, that we're going to tackle. Uh, so you just have me alone today, <laughs> right? But I figure the questions might be useful. It's, it's, it's been a while since it's just me talking, right? The guests didn't come through today. We're going to talk about internalized racism. But you know what? Uh, we can have a conversation because I figure there are a number of things that are important for us to discuss. I'm also doing a little bit. I uh, have an experiment today. Uh, today, I have some friends from my Instagram on, so I'm running an Instagram live as well. So greetings on Instagram, Aliri, Lana, the other people are jump on. I hope there are a few more come on. Uh, typically, we'll be streaming to Facebook. 
uh, only. But you know what? Let it go. Since it's me alone, we'll try something. We'll try something a little different. Uh, before we jump into the questions, though, we have to do some features of what I go on. And one of them is the Patwa word of the day, right? Always promoting the Patwa and, and discussing, you know, how some of these words come about. And uh, the Patwa word of the day is rotted. <laughs> Uh, write it. I, I don't know if to spell it properly, but I am hoping that those who are on will, will put the spelling and the meaning in the comment section. So if you understand Jamaican Patwa and you know what write it means, put it in the comment. Even my mother, my late mom used to use this one. Like, you know, and it's not a swear word because she used it. <laughs> so she'd say write it, you know, what is or something like that. So if you understand the Jamaican Patwa, uh, explain it. For those who don't please, Patwa is a beautiful language and us Jamaicans and others enjoy it because it's so colorful and creative. So Patwa word of the day is writing. For those who are on Facebook, I'm going to share some, some things about what's coming up. Uh, let's, let's jump on because lots of things happening and we want to, to make sure that you know everybody knows. Uh, tomorrow, for, for those who want to join, we have a general meeting. It's going to be via Zoom. If you're on our mailing list, you would have gotten the link. Uh, if not, you can jump on our website or you can jump on our social media and you get the link. Uh, See so who we'll jump on and say hello. Clarence, big up. Permalin, big up. Right? Uh, so tomorrow at 7 o'clock, we're going to have a general meeting. We'll discuss a few things that are happening, uh, including some events that are coming up uh, on July 10th. And for those of us who are in Alberta, Alberta is finally joining the United States in, being in, in, in getting towards being open. Right? Uh, so July 10th, we are planning to have two things. We're gonna have a cultural showcase. It's gonna start at six o'clock in the evening. It's gonna be streamed live on Facebook, YouTube, and on our website. And during the, the afternoon, we're gonna have a, a, a thing called a liquor taste benefit. Uh, you know, again, welcome to changes. So in terms of the cultural showcase, trust me, uh, we have a whole lineup of, of artists and performers and uh, people who want to contribute. It's a free show. You can jump on on any of these platforms that I mentioned to, to, to enjoy the showcase. Nana McLean, Mr. Progress, Nadi Downs, Gal Idiot, Wuzo Africa Dancers, Jean Chung, Ayush, Berian Choir, a whole lot of people jumping on to support what we're doing uh, as we promote Jamaican culture. Right, because uh, that's a big thing. We want to promote Jamaican culture, uh, and then of course the other thing that we're doing is is to to raise some funds. Because we have a couple of things that we want to 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 do. Right, see so what CC yeah joining big up big up my friend. Right, so during the day or in the afternoon on on the tenth of July, we're gonna have a little thing called Liquidius. Right. It's a benefit activity. We're going to raise some funds. Uh, there's a menu of, of Jamaican style food uh, and a number of features to it. Delivery within Calgary, Chestermere, Eardry, uh, all kinds of things. Right. I, I hear some real surprises and some fun Jamaican things are in store. Right. Uh, I, I just going to give you a teaser because we're going to talk about it in detail at one of our later meetings. But if somebody know what suck suck is, because I hear them talking, I'm not I'm not a, on the planning committee per se, but I overhear them them talking about a little thing called suck suck, right? Some real Jamaican vibes in the, the little taste benefit, and part of it, like I said, uh, is to is to raise some funds for our benevolent fund, for scholarship fund, and also to support our backpack program. And we want to to talk about those in details in 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 meetings that are coming up or in episodes of what I go on that are coming up. Right. Hey, what's up, Glenn? Uh, I wanted to call out a couple of things that are happening here in Calgary. One of them is the Calgary Black Film Festival. It's the first time it's happening. Uh, and I just thought it was cool. I was looking at some of the trailers yesterday. Uh, I just thought it was a fantastic collection of film. And to have it here in Calgary, I think is another big plus. So jump on the website. Uh, you know, they have a YouTube page as well. Look at some of the trailers. And who knows? Support some of the films, right? Uh, maybe you don't watch all of them, but even for, for, for a pass, for those who are big, big film buffs, jump on and support the thing because, you know, black people supporting black people is a good thing, right? And especially the arts at this time. So Black Film Festival. Uh, the other thing I want to, to make sure that we're all aware of is 
our scholarships. The JCAA has a number of scholarships that we're issuing this year. This year, uh, the information about the scholarships is on our website, jcalberta.com. Uh, the deadline for submission is June 30th. If you know somebody who's in a tertiary institution and can benefit from you know, a little investment, talk to them about it so they can jump on and, and apply for the scholarship. But there are more scholarships that, that are out there, right? And you know, one of the questions we're going to discuss today, I think we'll speak to some of these things, right? Uh, the Calgary Black Chambers have 15 scholarships that they're giving out this year, right? I think they have about $25,000 in that scholarship fund that they want to issue a number of legacy scholarships and a number of donor scholarships. If you know somebody, right, who is looking to, to get funding for their education, point them to these scholarships, folks. Get them to jump onto these websites and apply for the scholarships, right? It can't be that hard, right? So that they can get out there and do it. So the Calgary Black Chambers have some scholarships coming up, right? A couple of quick things that I want to remind you of. If you're in Calgary, you're not in Calgary. We have a thing called the Helping Hands Program, which is geared towards supporting the JCAA building program, right? We have a space, we have already started partially using it. And of course, know that the restrictions are gradually being lifted to where, you know, we go and get open. Uh, I figure by the time we hit July, this space is going to be buzzing with activity, right? Uh, here's an opportunity for you to support the program uh, in different ways at different levels, right? And there are a range of benefits. We're going to start featuring the, 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 the donors in a little bit. Uh, the first set of hands, I think, came in this week. So we're going to get that wall up and running, and there is still an opportunity. The wall is 14 feet by 16 feet. It's a ton of space, so a lot of opportunity for people to support. The other thing that I keep talking about, and this one is very close to me, is the resource room and library, right? We want to build the single largest collection of Jamaican books anywhere in Canada. Jamaican Afro-Caribbean writers for young people, for adults, fiction, non-fiction. If you've got books, uh, please think of donating a couple of them to the library, right? Uh, because we want to fill out these shelves and more, right? So there are a number of ways to get in touch with us if you want to donate, right? You can call us, you can email us, you can DM us on our social media. There are, you know, different uh, ways to connect so that we can make this all happen for Jamaicans, Afro-Caribbean people uh, here in Calgary and across Canada. All right, so please, we're looking forward to your support for the resource room and library. For those who are just joining and for those who are, are jumping on, on, on the Instagram, because you know I'm doing a little Instagram today. Today is me, right? And we're going to talk about a couple of things, but if you, if you don't hear the part of word is rotted, right? If you know what it means, it's not an expletive. It's not an expletive, I see a comment here, but it isn't an expletive because my mom used to use it and my mother not use the expletives. All right, here's what I want to talk about for a little bit because you know, I one of these questions is mine and there's the other question that I, I got from somebody in the community and I want, I want to have a little reasoning, right? So even though we didn't have a guess, it's been a while, I say, you know, um, let, let, let's have a talk, right? Uh, what have we learned from the last 15 months, right? Uh, you know, people, apart from using Zoom and, you know, people wear masks go everywhere now, you know, the other day I see somebody in a mask in a swimming pool, <laughs> right? So the, the, the best thing, let's put it this way, people have gotten used to wearing masks and they wear them anywhere, right? Even when they go swimming. But I thought on a serious note, though, that it, it might be a time to reflect and, and, and think about where we are, especially as plans are made for those of us in Alberta, because in other places, it opened up a long time and people are feeling their way back to normal. But what have we learned and, and how have we responded, right? So I put a few things uh, together. So we have this conversation and, you know, jump in the chat and put in your comments as well, because, you know, it'll be, it'll be interesting to hear your take. Uh, one of the things I realized over the last couple of months, 15 months, let's put it that way, is we have time. Everybody used to busy and busy and busy and crazy. Them can't do nothing. Them can't remember for touch base with them family. Them can't remember for do this or do that. There's always this excuse of time, right? Only to find out that the pandemic forced a lot of us to ratchet back 
and calm ourselves and, and find space for ourselves, our families, our friends, our own thoughts, right? And what it really uh, should be saying to us, if it has not said it very loud and clear, is that it really was about choice. And a lot of the things that we got sucked into and caught up with, right? Uh, we, we, we always made that excuse and not accept the fact, the fact that really it is about how much is certain, are, are certain things important and how much are we acknowledging that opportunity and that ability to choose. So think about your own situation, you know, family-wise, work-wise, social-wise, and all the rest of it, and how much we have been forced, right, to choose and do the things that sometimes we never really did things that we could have done. We never think, you know, oh, that would have been so easier, that was available. So if anything, I'm hoping that over the last, you know, year and, and a quarter, we have realized that, you know, there's some time and there is the ability for us to choose and we need to be a little bit more conscious, a little bit more aware, a little bit more, uh, should I say, conscious of all these choices and that ability. But here's another one. It also forced us, and hopefully when you look at your circumstance, you see that as well, to, to take another look at what matters, right? Uh, just this week, you know, I heard about one of our community members who is in the hospital on a ventilator, uh, you know, struggling to, to, to survive again, you know, hit by COVID-19. And, you know, a lot of us have had to reflect over the last year or so, because many of the things that were normal, and, you know, I'm looking for, you know, feedback in the comment section while we, while we have this conversation. A lot of us have been forced to kind of check ourselves, not only in terms of the choices we made, but what really matters, right? A lot of us, you know, used to go on vacation, they had Jamaica two, three times a year, and it locked down and we can't go for those who are in Jamaica and other places. You might have wanted to go other places and it is not as friendly, it is not as easy. Uh, many of what I'm gonna call the freedoms that we, we, we had or we took for granted were constrained by new restrictions and in some cases our own fears, right? So even where the restrictions didn't exist, our own fears triggered some of these things, right? And it forced you to kind of take a set or, or, or take stock of what's important, what really matters. Life becomes more, more of a premium. Family becomes more of a premium. Good connections become more of a premium, right? Because all of a sudden we had to pause, forced in some cases, you know, right? forced in some cases, right? And there's in some cases resistance to it, but between the government and your family and your workplace and all of those things, right? You have been forced to make some choices and take a serious look at who you are, what you do, and whether or not some of the things that we used to make such a big deal matter as much as we made them out to be. So now that we break back into uh, I'm going to call openness. Can it go happen everywhere? As the vaccination rate goes up, uh, the governments and all these restrictions are going to go away. And I hope that people take some of these lessons, right, and make a determination as to whether or not some of the things that we were making a big deal about matter. Uh, we're a little over a year since George Floyd, or the death of George Floyd. Right, And one of the things hopefully we learn is that the, the struggle continues for black people and the struggle is real, right? Just today or yesterday, I saw a post here in Calgary and for those who know NBR, you know, uh, about a situation that occurred where somebody walked up to her sister and just spit in her face. Yeah, man. Walk up to her sister in a public place and spat in her face. And there have been protests and lobbies and you know documents written and all kinds of things happening since 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 the George Floyd riots occurred in the United States. But there has also been an increased awareness 
that some of the things that we used to overlook, some of the things that we thought were not real, some of the things that we thought only happened to certain people are happening with more prevalence. And there are a lot of what I'm gonna call evil people in this world, evil because they choose to be evil, for whatever their reasons are. Just today, I, I saw another uh, thing from the, the CPS, the Calgary Police Services, talking about somebody who drove up against a guy on, on boat trail and just stopped and come out and said the guy was bad, we call it road rage, but he was, you know, you know, calling the guy a terrorist and all kinds of things. So there are many issues happening socially all over the world, because that's another thing that I think, you know, we would have learned this year all over the world where marginalized people, black people in many cases, brown people in some cases, people of other races are struggling with the inequality, the inequity in our society, right? And how people in certain positions see and treat these issues because not everybody is committed to fixing it. And that is something that we have to acknowledge. And when I get to the next question, right? We'll get into that a little bit and I'm looking for your, your contribution to that discussion because too often we think the solution is somewhere else and that somebody should fix it for us, right? Here are two more things that, that I, I, I learned over the last little bit. That change is not gonna wait on us. Change is gonna do its thing, right? It's gonna happen and whether we wanna respond positively or negatively, it's gonna happen anyway. In the face of the pandemic, many people have responded to the force changes with a positive mentality. Some people have created opportunities, some people have seized opportunities, some people have created wealth, some people never lost a beat, while there are other people who did, right? And there are many people somewhere along that spectrum, right? But what it says, and hopefully we learn, so we don't just stay in the same place, is that it's not gonna wait until you prepare the perfect response to it, until you get all your ducks or cat or dog, whatever it is that you are getting in a row in response to these changes, it's possibly gonna just keep going. And if anything, I'm hoping that we learn that you, you and me individ individually can do more because there is capacity, there is ability, there are skills that we possibly never tapped into because we got comfortable with where we were and we took many of these things for granted. Whether it's artistic skills, whether it's being released with residual income, whether it's contributing to social causes, whether it's you know, raising our political capital, whether it's getting more involved in our community, all of us must have realized in the last little bit as, as the changes were forced upon us that there's more within us, that there's capacity to contribute and contribute positively. But to come back maybe down to the first thing that we talked about, which is we have choice and the choice we make determines the actions that come from that. And it, it, it gets me into the conversation about a question I get all the time, right? And this could apply to any community, right? So for those who are listening, you don't have to be a black person. You don't have to be part of the, the black community to, to answer this question. But I hear it as a community leader, people come to me and, you know, them gripe and them question. And in some cases, it is, it is born out of real interest. But it's why don't we achieve more as a community? Right? And we can look at it in a number of different ways. We could, we could look at community as a community of Jamaicans. We could look at a community of Calgarians. We can look at it as a community of black people, right? And all the rest of that. Lilith, well, big up sister, right? Why don't we achieve more? And you know, every time I get that question, especially as it relates to the Jamaican community here in Calgary, here in Alberta. I, I, I pause and, I, and I, I reflect on how often that question pops up. And here's what I'm gonna say, because I want, to, I want to call out a couple of things and hopefully 
it will challenge you as an individual to, to think about it and, and, and again, choose what you're going to do. Here's what I see a lot of. I see a lot of talk, right? People come with ideas and conversation and everybody wants to have a conversation about a thing. Why don't you do this? Why don't the association do that? Why don't this group do that? Why don't this other group do that? There's always a suggestion about some, what somebody else should do. And it's a great conversation. We don't achieve more because there's too much talk. And this applies to a number of things, right? People, okay, let's talk about, for, for the Jamaicans on the talk, Let's talk about Jamaica and the crime situation. People talk about it all, and they've been talking about it for years. But if I were to look at you and say, okay, what have you done? How have you translated your talk and your ideas into reasonable action? And you'd be surprised how quickly that percentage falls and the conversation stop because people are prone to a range of conversation. And, and it pick the topic or, or pick the community and you will find that a little or, or, or in some cases nothing is achieved because we're stuck on the conversation. For those of you who are in Calgary, right, and being members of the Jamaican Association, for example, I, I hear so much about what we should have done, could have done. Association has been around since 1980 and there were so many things that we quote unquote never did. In the last couple of years, I think we have done well and we have achieved a bit. But we could have achieved so much more if there weren't so many people just talking. Here, talk. Everybody can tell you what you should do without answering the question, what am I? What are you contributing outside of the conversation? Here's another thing, right? And, and before I move away from the talk, the association has a range of activities and ideas that don't get fulfilled because we don't have enough people, resources available to make it happen. And this has been a perennial issue, but it's not just the association. The association is a microcosm of a wider community issue, right? And when we point fingers at groups that we think are more successful, right? When we point fingers and, and look at examples of saying, look at them, look, out, look at how they are successful. What I can guarantee you, right? And whether this is individual or collectively is that they have moved from just talking and they have taken action to achieve the outcomes that they're trying to do or trying to, to, to get to. Look at your own personal circumstance. Right? Whether it's your educational pursuits, whether it's your pursuit of quality of life, whether it's pursuit of health, whether it's pursuit of relationship issues, whatever it is, look and determine within your own self. So time for like a reflection and see whether or not your talk and whether it's just the voices talking in your head or not, whether that talk has translated into action that will lead to the outcomes that you want. Here's another reason why we don't achieve more. Focus. We start a thing, we have an idea, we move it into a little action, and then all of a sudden we get distracted, right? And, I, and, I, and I'll point that towards especially some of the black activism, the anti-racism, the anti-black racism issues that we're trying to solve. And I'll tell you, people get uh, distracted so easily, so easily. We build a plan and we can't stick to it. You know, many times I hear people, you know, jump and they're ready to quote the Bible about without vision, the people perish and, you know, ray, ray, ray. And two of my come back and say, but you know, I'm not true, you know. It isn't always true because I can think of many cases, many situations where there's a vision, a documented vision, a plan laid out and people still don't follow it. People still don't buy into it. People talk and don't contribute, right? For those of you who are based in Calgary and look at some of the things that we have talked about, look at some of the things that we have planned, look at some of the things that we have executed. And I'm talking about our association, for example, 
people get distracted, them lose focus, them get selfish. There's another flashing, you know, thing that they run after and they wonder why the achievements are as limited as they are and why there is the constant question of why isn't there more. So in addition to the talk, there is too often a lack of focus, a lack of deep seated focus. And here's the other thing that goes with that. So in addition to the focus, there's the question of commitment. And having been a community leader for, for many, many years, if you have worked with me, one of the things I say about community organizations, and it happens in professional life as well, is you only achieve when there's a proper balance of skills and commitment. So what I have seen in our community, and this is both Calgary and I've been involved in a range of things, is the commitment levels wane. You know, one day somebody's into it and the next day they're not. One week, you know, they're gung-ho and the next week they're not, right? One year they're great and the next week they're not. And I can promise you the groups, the communities that we consider to be achievers, the ones, and individual is the same thing, right? You wonder why some people, you know, set a goal, you know, whether it's wealth, whether it's weight, whether it's health, whether, you know, it's academics, whatever, and, and they achieve it. And you look at other people who are always lagging behind, right? And if you're from Jamaica, you know, <laughs> whether I could think of bad minor Jamaica, you know, or Patwa, you know, where, where people become envious of, of, of achievers, right? But many times they miss the fact that those achievements are the products of deep commitment, not just skill, not just skill. And look at your own circumstance and ask, why haven't I done more? Why haven't we done more? And measure your commitment level and how well you have been able to sustain that. And it will give you a true, a reasonable reading as to why. And I'm not saying that there's a perfect application of all of these to, to everybody's circumstance, you know, right? So some people talk and they have ideas and they build out the ideas and they implement them. And some of them don't work and that's fine, right? But you think of the people that we consider to be successful. Think of the organizations that we continue to be successful. Think of the countries that we continue to be successful. Think of the cities that we continue to be successful. So pick any example you choose and see if all of these factors in some way, shape or form don't kick in in order to drive them to the outcomes and the achievements that we look on and say, wow, why am I not doing that, right? So if it's an educational thing, it's not just IQ alone. After a while, IQ steps aside, right? Even the brilliant people have had to go through and take their knocks and have their failures, but they're still committed to what they're doing, right? And I think the same thing has to apply as a community, right? Where it can't be, you sit on the sideline all the time. And I'm not saying that people don't have to make choices enough. Because of course we do. You have family, you have, you have a, you know, let's call it a living that you have to make, whatever that looks like, right? And if you remember question one, things that we have learned over the last 15 months, COVID has taught us a lot of things. A lot of the things that we used to prioritize, all of a sudden are not so, so much priority anymore. The people who used to have to get up every day and drive to work, you know, two hours of commuting, realize that, oh my God, I could have achieved the same thing and more sitting right on, 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 in, in my home, at my desk or wherever. Organizations have now realized that some of the things that we considered staples were, now, were, were not as, 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 as significant as we made them out to be. Of course, there's a need for social interaction. Yes, there's a need for people. Yes, there's a need for you know, entertainment and all the rest of that. But we were forced to make adjustments, right? And for those who were setting themselves tasks, setting themselves goals, you were challenged on how committed am I to this? How am I going to truly make this happen? 
Am I serious about it or am I not? So from an association perspective, and this is me you now you know, putting in, 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 in a word for the JCAA, there are a couple of things that uh, we, we remain committed to. You see the library project, you see that building project, you see a, a number of those things around that, 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 that set of activities, we're committed to it. And even though the personnel in some cases has changed, even though you know, some people's focus shifted, we have, we have stuck with it and we'll continue because we think there's a place for ethno-cultural organizations to contribute to community, to contribute to the voices that speak to some of these issues, right? I can tell you, I spend a lot of my time behind the scenes contributing to some of these uh, discussions and solutions and strategies and actions, right? So we can try to make our communities better. On a personal level, same thing, right? Where you have to set goals, you have to look at who you are. You have to be true to you, right? Because who know the truth better than you, right? And look at your own circumstance and determine whether or not you're just talking about it. You know, like the people who, who want money, all they want to do is win the lottery. <laughs> but but you're the joke about it. They want to win the latch and them don't buy a ticket. And you say to yourself, okay, let's work the, through that equation. So even though it's a one in a million chance, you don't even take the action to give yourself that one in a million chance. So what do you expect for happen? <laughs> right? What do you expect to happen if you don't give yourself the chance by even taking the little walk and go and go buy the ticket? Right, and for the people who are jump on late, Shelly, big up, uh, Neville, yeah. There has to be at least that commitment to move beyond just the talk, right? In order to make these things happen, right? You also have to stay focused. I'll tell you something, you know, and, 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 I'm, and I'm glad like the restrictions are lifting up, even though, you know, I, I'll be the first to jump on say I'm, I'm, I'm not pro stampede this year, but that, that aside, for 40 years, we struggled as an organization to, to get to where we had a space where we could consistently meet and do our programs and have our activity, right? But we had to build a plan. And I can tell you, there was a plan in place before we got to where we could buy the place and where we could renovate the place. And trust me, there were naysayers. There were people who came and said it couldn't be done or can't be done that way and all kinds of things. And many of the people on this call who, who know, right, know that we had to stick with it. We had to stick to the plan, stick to the strategy and keep going. We had to move beyond just talking about it in order to get to where we are. And in order to keep going and to achieve more, we've got to keep doing more of the same. So here's my... Uh, ask of, of all of those who are watching this live. Choose the community that you want to contribute to and choose the things that you want to achieve. And even if the community just is you for starters, right? Think about how you are going to make something happen for yourself and by extension, whatever the community is around you. And move beyond the talk, right? And everybody's contribution is not going to be equitably known. Everybody have a different set of skills. Everybody have a different amount of time and resources available, right? But you can make a contribution, right? You can make a contribution. Hi, Alexi. Hey, what's up, Lil? All right, thanks for jumping on. All of us have an opportunity to make some contributions to the communities where we are. So you make that choice. And of course, we also have to make a determination as to you know, how focused we want to stay and how committed we want to be. Many of the solutions lie within the collective contribution, right? So when we talk about things like crime in Jamaica and corruption and all of that, when we talk about uh, racism and fighting against it uh, and making sure, especially for those who live in the diaspora, right? And fixing some of the things that have gone bad there has to be that collective effort. There has to be that collective contribution. And the people who sit on the fence and just talk, you're not contributing to it because it's not a shortage of talk, right? We have to ensure that we understand that we have to make some contributions, right? 
uh, there are a range of activities that people can contribute. I said, Joy, putting in and saying, boy, you know, there's a thing called Black Boys Code Calgary and they, they're looking for volunteers. Here are opportunities. So if somebody wants to volunteer for help out in that little way, it might be a one day commitment, but are you telling me that as a community, people, we can't find enough people to support some of these initiatives? And I'm gonna say, no, of course we can, if we want to. And if we want to stop asking that question of why don't we achieve more, then you have to do something. You have to do something. I have to do something. We all have to contribute in order to get to where we want and to get these outcomes. So, why I roll it out, right? <laughs> all the things to talk about, right? All the things and all the things to achieve. We as a community, and, I, and I'll speak for the JCAA, we have only scratched the surface in terms of the contributions that we can make to our community. We've only scratched the surface. There's so much more that we can do, right? So much more, but it requires the contribution of more than a few. It requires more people to move from just talk, 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 and everybody come with an idea of what somebody else should do, right? In order to make it happen. We have to move and stay focused. And also we have to take the lessons that were forced upon us in the last 15 months with COVID-19 and turn them into positive outcomes, right? Have you seen some of these opportunities that the virtual world has tossed on us? Have you looked at your community and seen places where you can contribute because you have a little bit more time and also because now you can join virtually? So the excuse of, boy, I may have a travel or I couldn't get there and all the rest of it, many of those have been negated because we're getting things done virtually. People from all over the world now are connecting. You know, I was on a, on a webinar the other day with 50,000 people from all over the world converging via technology to get stuff done and to learn and to interact. So the possibilities are endless if we choose to, right? And I want to invite, especially those who are in Calgary, to look at your community, not just the JCA, but others and say, you know, how can, I, how can I make a contribution to this? Because that is part of what is limiting us. All right, I'm going to take a break. Uh, for those who are joining late, the, the part of word of the day is rotted, right? Uh, if you know what it means, Throw it in the comment section and, you know, it's not an expletive because like I said, my good old mother who, you know, used to say it and, you know, we know she never used to use the expletives. Uh, we're going to get back to normal next week with, with Wataguan and for June, we're going to focus on health, health issues. Uh, we're going to have a conversation next week about cancer and some of the cancers that are prevalent in the black community. Uh, the week after that, we're going to talk about diabetes, right? our sugar, you know, Jamaican people call it sugar. And we'll get to why those call it sugar in the first place, right? I'm going to talk about diabetes and, and, and what are some of the things that we should have learned and be doing better at. The following week, we're going to talk about natural options, natural solutions, all the things from the earth that we could be using, should be using, and have not used, right? And wonder why. And then the following week, we're going to talk about some female issues, fibroids, you know, hysterectomies, uh, all of the things that seem to sometimes uh, show up and, 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 and the women of, of our, our, our community are affected, right? Uh, vaginal discharge, Dr. Dr. Unati is gonna come on and, and debunk some of the, the, the things. So, so lots of health issues we're gonna talk about in June. If you're on the show and uh, you're, you're technical and you have some skills, we're looking for somebody to help with this show. Right, we want to grow it, we want to do a little bit more. So jump on our Facebook page, you'll see a part-time role for a producer to help us to do this a little bit more. Uh, for those who join me on Instagram, it was a little experiment today, right? Since I didn't have a guest, I figure, you know, uh, you can jump on and we can talk, right? Why not? Uh, but that, that is what this, this, this Instagram thing was about. So 
jump on our website for those who are, who are, who are in Calgary, even if you're not, uh, we have a general meeting tomorrow at seven o'clock on Zoom, jump on our website, you'll see the information and you'll see what is happening. All right, I'll take a break. Thanks for joining. Uh, join us next week. Yes, I'm gonna have a guest next week, so it's not just me. But hopefully the conversation today uh, force a little, you know, reflection and a little thought within you to say, okay, you know, what can I do differently? How can I contribute? What are some of the answers that I have to some of these questions, right? What have I learned in the last little bit? And how can I do more? Because it is within you. All right, take care until next week. What well, good, right? Play the bourgeois again. Oh, every day they seem to get